Hi again, YouTube. I made a script for ripping my DVDs, and I thought that it might be helpful to others, so I just wanted to show it off a little bit. I have it in my scripts directory here. There we go. So first is just a bunch of comments. Um, I don't really go for GPL licenses or all the technical mumbo jumbo because I don't really see there being a lot of repercussions to the reuse of this script. But uh, you know, if you reuse it, awesome. If you pass it along, please include my name. So what this will do is it will use the LSDVD program, which you'll need to have installed, and then Handbrake CLI, which you will also need installed, to kind of intelligently guess what needs to be ripped from the uh, DVD in terms of its main title, and to minimize file size while maximizing quality. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, <clears throat> pardon me again. So, just to walk you through the script quickly, first couple statements here are checking to make sure that you have Handbrake CLI and LSDVD installed. Also, I really recommend that you have a uh, temp folder in your home directory to write Scratch stuff to. Furthermore, I recommend that you mount that directory into tempfs, which basically means that Anything written to that directory will be written to your volatile memory or RAM instead of your hard drive. That way it minimizes writes to the hard drive and you don't have to worry about cleanup later. Um, also the output will go to your home directory. So these things are just checking do you have a home directory, is it mounted, and do you also have a ribs directory. So um, now that we're on to the actual meat of the program, I'll just uh, show you really quickly. First of all I'll run LSDVD on my optical drive here so you can see what kind of output it gets. So for this example I'm going to be ripping a movie by Ed Wood called Jailbait because it's in the public domain. You can see that DVDs have their title encoded in all capital letters and separated by underscores instead of um, regular spaces. So I have uh, the word rip aliased in my bash RC to just automatically execute my rip script. So it'll gather data and it'll run the title, what you see here, through a said instruction to uh, transform it into camel case and to uh, change underscores into spaces. It'll look for the longest title, in this case it's going to be two, and uh, <clears throat> this particular DVD doesn't have any subtitles, but what the script will do is uh, detect the language that the track is in, or the title, and then if it's in English, it will um, put the subtitle track in as something optional to pull up. If it's in a foreign language, then it will burn it on to the video. So there will be a couple options here first. First, do you want to change the name? I don't need to. So enter for no. Do I want to change the subtitle track? Well, in this case, there isn't one anyway, so no is fine. And then third, it will ask me, do I want to make a test clip for it first? And as a general rule, I recommend that you go with yes. What it's going to do is go to chapter two of the title that it discovered was longest and rip that and then um, automatically play it through VLC. So I also recommend that you have VLC Media Player installed. Uh, going back to the script here, I'll just walk you through it. First thing it'll do is detect which drive is your optical drive by running lsblk and then looking for the one that reports itself as a ROM device. And then run the lsdvd program. <clears throat> if it can't, if lsdvd can't find anything, then that's where you'll get an error message to say, you know, make sure that it's a DVD, not a Blu-ray. Uh, this is a DVD only script and then it will gather the name of the disk and then it will pipe it through set that's what will convert it from all uppercase to camel case and then also remove that underscore and replace it with a space to make it more human friendly the title it will look for the longest title and assume that that is the main content and then again it'll look for the audio track and print that out. If it is not English, then the subtitles will be burned in. Otherwise, they will be default, meaning that you can 
optionally bring them up or leave them off. And then uh, the subtitle will be equal to running the same thing, looking for the first English track, etc., etc. Um, then it will run through what I just showed you in my terminal there. Do you want to change the subtitle track? Do you want to change the name of it? Do you want to make a test clip, etc.? So if you say yes, it will encode chapter two, like I said, and then play it for you. And then if you're happy with that, I would actually show it to you here. But since I'm encoding this video, I think that that would uh, interfere doing two encodes at once. So unfortunately, I just have to show you here. Anyways, it will uh, show you chapter two that you can test the subtitles, make sure the audio is the language you want, make sure that it's the correct title, etc. And then if that's good, it will ask you, do you want to rip the entire title now? And if everything is good, then you can just hit yes. And then it will run handbrake CLI. And it will be on the title that it detected was the longest on your DVD drive. It will output it to your home directory in the rips folder under name.mp4, the name variable. And then this is uh, just a bunch of stuff. You can look through the handbrake CLI help options. Negative two means do a two pass encoding, mean pass one to see what kind of uh, bitrate encoding it should use in different parts so that it can allocate it as effectively as possible. And then the second pass will actually allocate those bits. Minus capital O will optimize it for streaming. That way, if you are, uh, you know, if you host it on your own server somewhere or just are pulling it off the cloud, you can start playing it right away. The uh, metadata information is contained at the beginning of the stream rather than at the end, so you don't need to wait for the full file to download before it's playable. Uh, include a variable frame rate. Use the X264 encoder from uh, video LAN, which is a very high efficiency encoder. And then for those, I use these particular encoding options. Now, this will lead to a very CPU intensive rip. But like I said, the idea was to maximize uh, quality while minimizing file size. So this will take some time. It's good to go grab a beer and probably a lunch while something rips. So, uh, Going uh, beyond that, the bit rate is 896 kilobits per second, which might seem low to you, uh, especially since DVD quality in MPEG-2 is anywhere from like 5 to 8 megabits per second. But again, with these encoding options, you are able to squeeze that down quite a bit while still maintaining quality. Uh, minus capital E here means what audio encoder to use which is AAC, and the bitrate for that is going to be 128. So that's just a, like it shows here, a downmix stereo pair. So if it has 5.1, it's going to be downmixed to stereo. Of course, you can change all these options if you want, but again, maximizing quality while minimizing file size. Um, and then for the subtitle tracks, um, it will pull that track that it detected earlier and then encode it either as optional or burned in and for that subtitle track, and then pump the output into your temp directory under the name of the rip.log. And that's basically it. Once it's done, it'll tell you that it's been placed in your rips directory, and then the script will exit. So uh, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section, and I will answer them as quickly as you can, as I can, sorry. Um, one last thing, some people don't know this and most people won't care, but it is illegal in the United States at least to rip uh, commercial DVDs or any DVD that has a current copyright status. Um, all commercial DVDs are encrypted with uh, a encryption called CSS, and if you want to bypass that, you will need a library called libdvdcss. So that's just a final note. Use it at your own discretion and or peril. But bye for now.